One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the... Uh, so yeah, we're going to be talking about euphoria. And let's get... I'm still waiting on a, on a message or two. But I guess not. Okay. Right. Now. So, so, so today I'm, I'm hopefully going to make this webinar a little bit different than normal. Just, I mean, just a little bit different was we'll, because it's, I mean, we're in, we're in a different time. That's for sure. So, um, hold the line is the theme theme of this week, hold the line. And so we're going to be going over the market segment. That'll be a pretty big, that'll be a pretty big segment. I just want to kind of go over that, um, first, uh, then I ha I'm going to do the rant of the week next. Because I, um, because I want to, what I want to do today is I kind of want to have a little bit of a party, um, and not not just not like a party party. I mean, it's online. We're just kind of talking about fucking stocks, but like a party is in. Like I want to bring, uh, I want to bring a mod or two on, like and, and just you know, kind of like I'm sure you guys don't just want to hear my rants. I'm sure you want to hear everybody else's rants too. So I want to bring a mod or two or three on. Maybe yeah, maybe maybe that'll we'll cap it at that just so it's not like so much. But um, and then we'll just you know we'll we'll go back and forth, and I have a couple ideas of. Who wants to come on? That's what I'm waiting for to see if Smon's gonna message me back. But I guess I guess they're gone. Um. Um. Or it's to do anyway. And so yeah. So we'll kind of have a little discussion session. We'll all talk about the traders of the week because I'm sure like it'd be more fun to hear some other points of view than just mine. Um. And yeah. And then like I have content to share. And if we get to it, like uh, 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 the the stra the the content part of the webinar will be kind of brief just because I'd rather talk. Um, yeah. So, however, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. And as a Q&A webinar, I'm happy, we're happy to answer any questions. Just go ahead and, and post them there whenever we're ready. Okay. So, the fucking market, dude. Jesus, fuck. Let's, let's pull up the spy just so that when I minimize this, the spy is up here. All right. So, the fucking market. <laughs> the fucking market, indeed. Yeah. So where were we? So if you remember last week, like we, we had just got the, um, you know, the, the inauguration news, right? The, the inauguration news hit the market. Pull up the Jimmy. Exactly. And so the market got what it wanted, right? It got a, it got a peaceful transition of power. And most of the roadblocks that we saw uh, were gone. Like the foreseeable uh, known ones are gone. Of course, unforeseeable roadblocks always stunt growth. Um, but normally we had that sell the news situation, but because of, uh, but because, you know, when stocks pre-price that move, however, because the, um, the anticipation of the, uh, the, that peaceful transfer, not the recovery, I do think that the recovery is vastly priced in because we're at all time highs, but that anticipation kind of didn't have, kind of wasn't priced in because I think there was still that uncertainty, uh, and we got it and it was fine. And we saw uh, like a nice market push that day, right. Once that was out of the way. And so like that, and I basically thought that we were, you know, like smooth sailing from here and boy, was I kind of wrong. That's for sure. I mean, this would be an unforeseeable roadblock, I would say. But basically, uh, this market got thrown into kind of a what the fuck is going on uh, mentality. That's exact. I mean, I can't explain it any other way except that. Right. This market was just like, what in the sweet Jesus is is this? Right. And, and whenever the market doesn't know what the fuck's going on, like uh, it's normally a red. It's normally red because people sell because people are uncertain, right? Sell uncertainty leads to selling, not necessarily, you know, cause uncertainty is that fear, you know, it's, it's fear and that leads to selling. And so basically, you know, the, that, that upward progress kind of came to a little bit of a screeching halt, right? Man, the boundary, like man, the boundaries, right? Do your duty to the market, right? If you watch Harry Potter, right? That's what McGonagall said, man, the boundaries, the market sanity and stability is threatened, right? Um, you know, the, in the way, the only way I can say it that Reddit kind of hijacked the market, right? It kind of hijacked, um, the entire market. And, and when I mean the entire market, I mean the entire market. Like, um, I, like I had some swings and like, um, I remember like the day GME, like kind of like super tanked one day and like literally like GME tanked and like all of my positions tanked at exactly the minute that GME tanked, like every single one. And I, some large caps some small cap doesn't really matter. Like every single one just oh, like at 11 o'clock, just like, yeah. I'm just like, what the fuck? What was that? And then I look at the spy, the spy's tank. I'm just like, 
what in the sh what like why is GME having an, an effect on the market? I honestly didn't think it, it would, but it did, right? And so, and the reason like the reason that I'm attributing to this, right, is I mean the, the these redditors just kind of hijacked it, and um, you know it it kind of basically threw caution to the wind to every single investor, and everyone's like, well. I thought the market was supposed to be based on reason. This is absolutely ridiculous. It should have tanked by now. I'll get into that in the next slide. But it, for me, it kind of maybe reminded the stock market about bubbles and maybe looking at our current situation and looking at GME and like, wow, we're in a big bubble. Like maybe, I mean, if this is what's allowed to happen, maybe we've allowed, you know, maybe this stock market is bubble given our current GDP level. Maybe we pre-priced too far. I think there was a little bit of that fear in there. But ultimately, what I also think happened is there, there was a lot of um, like I think there was a lot of algo tripping. Um, uh, like, you know, like these a lot of these these algos are run by big firms, you know, like Citadel. A lot of these, um, you know, these funds like these firms are are run. A lot of these firms who supposedly got caught, these hedge funds, these big firms that got caught in. Uh, GME and AMC and you no, know, you know, all these like high short interest names. That's been the theme of the market, right? A, a lot of these like lost big money, which I mean, shame on them for allowing their positions to be that significant. But um, you know, what kind of happened is, I, I mean, I think there was some algo tripping. I think there was some financing of other positions to finance their losses for this position. And like a whole lot of positions kind of sold off everywhere else across the board. And I think a little bit of that happened, you know, a little bit of kind of sell, sell our position algos kind of happened. Um, you know, and like, you know, like now that we're, we started to see some reality kind of set in today, all of a sudden, look, you know, it's a spy kind of pop this, that spy kind of recovered. Cause it, like, in my, like my take on this is that like, what that basically was is that the, you know, the market, was rewarded with reason because we all know that GME should go down. So basically the market, it was kind of tanking in uncertainty because the market wasn't doing what the market was supposed to be doing. Like we all knew that we all know that, you know, the market wasn't being efficient and it wasn't correcting itself. And it just kept going, getting worse and worse. Like the unreasonableness in the market kept getting worse and worse. And that's why we kind of saw this parallel action uh, between the spy and the GME. Like every time the spy tanked, uh, every time GME ripped, the spy tanked, and every time when GME tanked, the spy ripped. We kind of saw that that inverse relationship, right? The market likes that this unreasonableness is slowing down, and as reality sets in. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley, and one of the head mentors and moderators at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at two one three four five eight five nine nine seven. This is not a robot; it is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up, back to the video. You know, like maybe that can potentially slow down future unreasonableness and and I think that's kind of what's going on. And so I think that like the market kind of had its taste. Once the market realizes that there is some reality, even if it tanks higher now, as long as the market knows that it will eventually tank like it did, now, even if it goes higher and then tanks again, but the second the market is rewarded with, you know, the, that certainty of knowing, okay, we all knew it was going to tank, but it wasn't, but now it finally is. Um, now the market kind of has more, the market knows what's going on and, you know, it, you know, and it feels safer. And so I, that's why I think the, the market rallied today. And so I basically, I mean, if I had to put a number, I think we just continue that uptrend with a 30% chance. I, I'm pulling that number out of my ass, but like, of more instability like you know the, this trend could continue um but i don't think so uh and i'll get i'll get into that too but yeah last week's market was basically take a number right take a number on which stock you're going to trade because there's literally too many to count and that really continued this week and last week i had guessed like the previous week before that like it, i had said if the day twos had reclaimed we'll get stronger right e even though like we're kind of, we were kind of edging onto a seller's market if the day two's reclaiming kept on um, continuing, we would get stronger. And honestly, what I had thought was that because we were still in this kind of January effect kind of market, I thought that we could see the market get even, a, you know, nuttier than before, right? We could get even stronger of a bull market than before. Um, and then we could start selling off hard, you know, because that, you know, the overall market like was just starting to get into seller's land. And I basically, 
track kind of drew a stock chart. Like basically, I think that it could get a little bit nuttier before it ultimately stuffs and we get into sell land. And um, and boy, was I right and not right enough. Like I was right, but I didn't think it would get this fucking this fucking bad. <laughs> like this nutty. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not claiming credit for this. I had no idea the kind of this shit would happen. I just thought we'd get a little fucking rangier. But it did, and and then some. So, yeah, I mean, and honestly, there was a lot more movers in this. I just couldn't capture them all. There was just so many. So I just wanted to pick the most important ones that I saw that were moved. I mean, the thing is, is that you can see that we're, we're still in a buller, bullish market on, on, the, on the sheer basis on the fact that we have this many bulls in the week, right? This many positive sentiment tickers, right? All these stocks just went absolutely nuts. Um, the bullish factors in this market... You know, offering, I mean, dude, bingo's offered so many times. I think naked offer today didn't matter. Like offerings aren't meaning much. The range is fucking insane. Um, gap ups, I mean, I mean, a stock, a stock like closes well and it gaps up the next day. I mean, it's not a for sure thing, but it's a very super common thing. Imagine if GME finds the market top. Um, there's no shortage of shares to borrow. That shit's just lighting up the market. In fact, that's the theme of this market. It's any stock that has high short interest, it was fucking going. In fact, there's a website. There's literally a website, you know, like high short interest stocks. And I'm sure you got some of you guys may have looked high short interest stocks. Every single one of these stocks fucking spiked. Every single one of them. GME, SPCE, um, AMC, BBBY, Fizz, Fubo. Right? All these stocks are literally the runners of the last two weeks. Right, that's the theme of this market. Even KNDI, KNDI is on here and it popped or something. Like I saw that this morning. Like all these fucking stocks are just running. Like every single one of these just had a big pop. Like all of them. And so, uh, like that's the theme of this market is high short interest. But that's no secret, right? But anyway, um, yeah. Thanks, Harry. Yeah, dude, GME needs to offer. I mean, they probably will. But it probably it'll probably just dip it and it'll go higher. But anyway, the bearish factors, right? I mean, we're super extended on a lot of names, and like they can always go higher, but they need like stocks do pull back, right? And that is a bearish factor, offering me a better price, exactly. Uh, market exhaustion, like I mean, this is fucking euphoria. Like the entire, I mean, we're euphoric in the large cap market. We're euphoric. Tesla's euphoric. Everything's euphoric. Like uh, GME is just. It, it, it's it's basically just like the straw that broke the camel's back, but it's like made of kachin, the, the Dragon Ball Z heaviest metal in the universe. It's that that metal straw that broke the camel's back and then like it, the, the camel sunk to China. <laughs> That's basically what this is, is that like I, like GME is, is the, the lid blown off. It's ultimate sign of market, just total blow off the top move it's literally what it's called um i do think that the sympathies are getting weaker and weaker and i thought aal was very telling today aal was i mean it's a big fucking it's a it's it's a large cap and it just moved 80 percent like a small cap and I, I had a feeling that that stock would give the entire game back i think it almost did but i was like holy shit all right that's just you know we've gone too far when when aal moves 80 percent like that and like, that's just way too much. That's, that's too big of a play um, to kind of do that on. And I think that was just ultimate pinnacle, uh, a bearish factor. And so that's basically where we're at. Like, like this is, this has been the trend and we literally, like we are at almost peak range. Like I've been doing these webinars for like two years now. Uh, the range bar has never been here, right? I haven't seen this range since, I don't know. Uh, the summer of 2017. Well, I want to make sure that I that this doesn't stop recording. So I do want to stop the recording now. I mean, we can still, but I do want to make sure. That's just. Oh yeah. Just, that was a good one. That was a good one, dude. You know. Thanks for coming on, but. No problem. Yeah, man, I'm gonna just stop it now, and we can just still chat. But like, just for my own sanity. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.